Hi, welcome to this uh, tutorial video on the organization of the nervous system of animals. The nervous system is that part of the animal body that is uh, responsible for coordinating and integrating the animal's actions and also receiving sensory information by transmitting impulses or signals to and from different parts of the animal body. So the nervous system controls everything the animal does, including breathing, walking, thinking and feeling. The nervous system is uh, made up of uh, the brain, the spinal cord and all the nerves of uh, the animal body. So in this uh, short tutorial video, I will explain the organization of the nervous system. And then in the subsequent uh, videos, I will cover topics on the brain, the spinal cord, the spinal nerves, the cranial nerves, autonomic nervous system and other topics. After going through this uh, short tutorial video on the organization of the nervous system, you'll be able to define the nervous system. You'll also be able to name the two main parts of the nervous system. You'll be able to state the functions of the central nervous system as well as the functions of the peripheral nervous system. And you'll also be able to explain diagrammatically how the nervous system or the central nervous system interacts with uh, the peripheral nervous system. So those will be your expected learning outcomes. On this slide, I will explain the conceptual organization of uh, the nervous system. So, the nervous system is made up of uh, the central nervous system and also the peripheral nervous system. Now, the central nervous system consists of uh, the brain and uh, the spinal cord. And uh, the central nervous system uh, performs uh, three major functions. And uh, these functions are to take in uh, sensory information, to also process that information that has been taken in. This information is taken in in form of impulses or nerve signals. And then after processing the information, the, a response is sent out in form of uh, motor signals. So the central nervous system uh, mainly performs uh, those three functions. That is to take in sensory information, process that information, and then send out motor signals. On the other hand, the peripheral nervous system is made up of all the nerves outside of uh, the central nervous system. And uh, the nerves that are considered mainly under the peripheral nervous system are the cranial nerves, which are 12 in number, and also the spinal nerves, which can be variable. But uh, for example, in animals like the dog, there are normally 36 uh, you know, uh, spinal nerves. So these are outside the central nervous system. And uh, the peripheral nervous system performs two major functions. And that is to sending inf uh, sensory information from different areas of the animal's body to the brain or via the spinal cord. And uh, then the other function is to now send the processed information that is coming from the brain or spinal cord to send that motor information in form of commands or instructions from the brain to various parts of the animal body. And usually the parts of the animal body that uh, receive that uh, information, which is in form of commands or instructions, are the effector organs such as uh, muscles uh, and uh, glands. On this slide, I will explain diagrammatically how the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system interact with each other. So the central nervous system and uh, the peripheral nervous system interact with each other through two types of uh, nerve cells, which are known as uh, afferent neurons and efferent neurons. The afferent neurons are the sensory neurons that uh, receive sensory input from different parts of the animal body, both from the external environment through, for example, through the skin or from the internal environment uh, through, for, for example, stimuli within the gastrointestinal tract. So these afferent neurons uh, will then take this information to the brain or the information can get to the brain via the spinal cord. And then the brain will take in this sensory information it will process that information and then it will give out a command or instruction by sending out motor signals. And uh, these motor signals will end up uh, going through the effector neurons. So the motor signals or commands from the brain get to the effector organs, which are the muscles or glands, via the efferent neurons. And uh, the information which is uh, taken to the effector organs can be involuntary response in nature via the autonomic nervous system or indeed it can be somatic in nature 
and uh, the voluntary information will be there to regulate physiologic processes such as heart rate, blood pressure, respiration, digestion, and uh, certain uh, reproductive processes. So the other information taken to the effector organs can uh, also be voluntary, which uh, you know regulates the conscious activities. And um, this uh, comprises an arm of uh, the peripheral nervous system, which is known as uh, the somatic uh, nervous system. So skeletal muscles are in this uh, category as the effector organs of uh, the somatic nervous system. Then within the autonomic nervous system, the efferent neurons can be further subdivided into a sympathetic arm which com is com composed of uh, sympathetic neurons which have a tendency of uh, increasing physiologic functions such as uh, the heart rate, breathing and also GIT motility. And also the other arm of the autonomic nervous system which uh, receives the efferent neurons is the parasympathetic uh, nervous system. And uh, this has a tendency of uh, slowing down physiologic functions such as uh, heart rate, breathing, and also GIT motility. So both uh, the sympathetic and parasympathetic arms of the autonomic nervous system can be found in, the, in what is known as uh, the enteric nervous system, which is also known as the intrinsic nervous system. So this enteric nervous system controls the gastro gastrointestinal tract function such as the, in, either slowing or increasing motility within the GIT. So in short, that is how the central nervous system and uh, the peripheral nervous system interacts, interact with each other. So this is mainly via two very important uh, neurons, which are known as the afferent neurons and efferent neurons. So information, first of all, is taken in by afferent neurons and this can either be from uh, the external environment for example via the skin or it can be from the internal environment uh, you know things like uh, food touching the GIT that would be a stimulus to take to the for, for information to be taken to the brain so this information gets to the brain and then it is processed okay it is processed and then uh, sent back to effect the organs via efferent neurons and these uh, efferent neurons can be uh, in two, at, at two levels. One is voluntary, which represents the somatic nervous system. Then the other one is involuntary, which represents the autonomic nervous system. And we are saying that the autonomic nervous system, on the basis of these efferent neurons, can be further subdivided into a sympathetic arm, which we call the sympathet sympathetic nervous system, and also the parasympathetic nervous system. And these are also further represented in the GIT as an enteric nervous system. So that is uh, the conceptual organization and also how the central nervous system interacts with the peripheral nervous system. You have now come to the end of this uh, short tutorial video on the organization of uh, the nervous system. So you should be able to define the nervous system you should also be able to then to name the two main parts of uh, the nervous system. You should also be able to state the functions of uh, the central nervous system as well as the functions of the peripheral nervous system. And uh, finally, you should be able to explain how the central nervous system interacts with uh, the peripheral nervous system through afferent as well as uh, efferent uh, neurons. Thank you for watching.